Well, good morning. It's an honor and a pleasure to be able to address you today. My name is Emilio Esteban, and I am the chief scientist for the U.S. Department of Agriculture's Food Safety and Inspection Service, and since 2012, the chair of the Codex Committee uh, on Food Hygiene. In this position, I was asked to make a few statements regarding the recently updated Codex General Principles of Food Hygiene Guidelines. This document is incredibly important for international food safety, and it is also of special personal significance to me. I started my public service career in the United States at the, food, at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention in 1994. The following year, in 1995, the U.S. Department of Agriculture Food Safety and Inspection Service published a landmark rule requiring that all regulated establishments implement a hazard analysis and critical control point or HACCP system for them to operate. Next slide, please. The Food Safety and Inspection Service, or FSIS, is responsible for ensuring that meat, poultry, and egg products are safe and that they are properly labeled and packaged. Under a HACCP system, establishments are responsible for identifying the potential microbiological, chemical, and physical hazards that could potentially affect their product. They must establish food safety systems to monitor and prevent these hazards from occurring. In turn, the role of the FSIS inspector is to verify that establishment's food safety systems are working and to ensure the safety of products through congressionally mandated inspection of each and every single carcass. The last 20 years of my career have been spent at FSIS. Also, for the last 10 years, I have had the opportunity to chair the Codex Committee on Food Hygiene. So as you can see, HACCP has been a central theme in my federal career, in my food safety career. And, and, and when I had the opportunity to lead the revision of the hygienic guidelines, I took it with a lot of energy and enthusiasm. So over the next few minutes, I will try to convey the message of how very, very important, in fact, essential implementation of HACCP approach is for food industry and for public health. Next slide, please. The original Codex guideline document, the, the one that began this whole uh, business, was published in 1969. It did have some revisions in 1997 and in 2003, but this most recent version in 2020 is the most complete and forward-looking version of them all. Obviously, everybody has a right to safe and nutritious food. But eating habits have changed in many countries, and new production preparation, storage, and distribution techniques have developed to meet the consumer's evolving needs and preferences. So in order for a document to be consistent, current, and effective food hygiene practices are vital to avoid disease and minimize negative consequences, consequences of foodborne illness. So everybody who works along the food chain, from farm to slaughter to retail to consumers, has a distinct role to play to ensure that food is safe and suitable for consumption. So food business operation operators, or in this case, FBOs, should be aware of and understand the hazards associated with the food that they produce, transport, store, and sell, and the measures that are required to control each of these hazards. This is exactly what a HACCP approach does and why its implementation is good for everyone. Next slide, please. The 2020 revision, a few, a few points about the 2020 revision of the Codex General Principles Food Hygiene Guidelines. When we decided to conduct this latest revision, my responsibility as the chair of the committee was to facilitate our discussion in such a way so as to have the final product meet the following five parameters, which you see on this slide. The document needed to be updated to meet today's food production systems and to be flexible enough to adjust to future market changes. As I said before, cons consumer patterns change all the time and documents like this need to be flexible and to remain updated. A third condition, the document, the final result needs to be inclusive of all potential regional food business operator differences. Obviously, for a codex document to be applicable, it has to be applicable worldwide. 
it requires the, the, the document to be inclusive of all possible different versions of a HACCP that we present around the world. And number four, it should be measurable. The, the performance parameters in the HACCP system should be measurable so that you can actually document, validate, and verify the performance of the HACCP system. And the most important one of all is that it has to be practical so that the implementation is feasible and likely. If the document is not practical, nobody's going to use it. And what's the point of having something sitting on a shelf? So as you may expect, with more than 80 different delegations present in the plenary discussions, operating in at least three different languages across many, many time zones, reaching consensus was a continuous challenge. So we nominated six co-chairs, one from each of the different regions of the world. This allowed us to agree on particular terminology that was applicable worldwide to provide regional context and to bring reality into a document that was expected to have worldwide applicability. Uh, that obviously to say that this was easy was a lie and it did take us a few years to get through, but we had a lot of discussions. We had some significant discrepancies and we had very, very strong arguments. Ultimately, we were able to reach a common ground because we always reverted to keeping in mind this core principle that I may mentioned before, updated, flexible, inclusive, measurable, and practical. This document is extremely important, important for the Codex Committee on Food Hygiene, and in fact, for the entire Codex Alimentarius. The structure, the headings, the definitions that reside in this text represent the foundation for the majority of the other text that this committee of food hygiene generates. So this is the core principles that drive all our other operational work. Next slide, please. So um, as your country moves to implementing a HACCP approach, I'd like to share some of what I think are the most significant strengths of this document. And I have uh, picked three major issues. First, it creates an even playing field for every food business operator. The expectations are clear, they're transparent, they're obvious. In other words, you write your HACCP plan. The transparency provides a common ground that takes away the subjective interpretation and focuses clearly on identification of the hazards, the control of those hazards, and the quality of the final output, the food product something that people are going to eat. The principles apply to any food business operator, large or small, regardless of the type of commodity that they handle. The second point I'd like to make that makes this document strong, it provides the regulatory apparatus a consistent basis from which to operate. In other words, all food business operators are treated the same. Because of the focus of the, is food safety and quality of the farm product, the pathway to achieve the goal is not as important as achieving the outcome. So what I'm trying to say is that while the HACCP system is a requirement, you should have a HACCP system on file on record. What constitutes the appropriate HACCP plan is based on an ongoing consultation between the food business operator and the regulatory authority. Both parties agree on the parts, and both parties focus on the output. The third strength of this document, it clearly makes a distinction between food hygienic practices and hazard analysis and critical control point system. So the document provides principles and guidelines on the application of good hygienic practices throughout the food chain to produce food that is safe and suitable for consumption. Then it moves on to provide guidance on the application of the HACCP principles. Ultimately, the document makes clear the relationship between the good hygienic practices and HACCP and provides the basis on which sector and product specific codes of practice can be established. So with those three threads in mind, having revised the Codex General Principles of Food Hygiene Guidelines, TCFH, the committee I lead, must not conduct a review of all the other documents of which in the area over many years that address a particular commodity 
to make sure that they align with the current headings, structure, and definitions. So as you can imagine, it'll take many years to go through all those codes and update them. But with the dedication and active engagement of leaders like those in the Japanese delegation, we will be there. Next slide, please. All that said, all that said, as Japanese food business operators move into the adoption of HACCP, it will not be without a challenge. Operating in a HACCP environment requires the food business operator employees to think consistent with the HACCP principles. Employees will only adopt this mindset if the food business operator and managers see the benefits of the HACCP system and promote it within the organizations. Again, you have to think HACCP to be HACCP. It means employees will be empowered to actively participate in the implementation of a HACCP system and feel like they own and are part of that process. With that sense of empowerment and ownership, the food business operator culture will change. Everyone will engage in identifying the hazards, implementing control points, monitoring for continuous process control, and most importantly, everyone can provide input to control strategies and corrective actions. Government and academia will provide you with the scientific foundation for the implemented approaches, and consumers will trust an open and transparent food production system. So these concepts of empowerment, delegated responsibility, intuitive decision-making, and integration of all levels of personnel into the manufacturing of a safe and nutritious product is referred by some as food safety culture. I'm sure you've heard the term food safety culture. This is the, the whole idea. Think food safety rather than having to, to mandate it. It's a food safety culture. In essence, the HACCP approach shifts from a command and control system where everyone has to conform to a particular way of doing things to a system that is particular to each business operator focus on the final product safety and quality without necessarily directing how to get to that endpoint. One, and then I have one final recommendation or advice I would, I would say. Change is not gonna be painless. Like I said, in FSIS, we issued this rule in 1995. Change will not be painless. The key to success for the food business operator is to maintain constant communication with all the employees and also with the regulatory authorities. If all parties, that is employees, food business operators, academia, regulators, and consumers are all in constant communication, the result will be a resilient, productive, and dependable food system. Next slide, please. So in conclusion, I would just like to say, uh, that Codex is, is responsible for providing a globally accepted set of guidelines and standards that are used by countries to define safe food for international trade. However, most countries follow the same recommendations for their domestic markets. In other words, they were developed with regional concepts in mind, with language that was applicable, thinking about the entire world. So many countries adopt them for their own domestic markets. The publication of the updated general principles of food hygiene document in 2020 represents the latest worldwide accepted guide for food business operators. It took us a long time to get here, but we think this document does provide a way to operate into many years in the future. I would like to thank you very much for the opportunity to share these few thoughts, and I hope you have a fantastic day. Thank you.